Dear kind and loving Father, thank you for a wonderful day. We pray that you would guide us. We pray that you would keep us safe. We thank you for blessing our family members and our friends. As we go through the Sabbath school lesson, we pray that you would help us to learn a lot more about you. It's my prayer and just name we pray. Good morning everyone. We'll begin our song service today with hymn number 382, O Day of Rest and Gladness. loves me.
this time we'll continue with our choruses and we'll start with Jesus name so sweet <laughs> Sabbath boys and girls, our lesson is entitled today, Joseph Forgives His Brothers. Has anyone done something really, really mean to you? Did you forgive them? Was it easy to do? Joseph's brothers had done something really, really mean to him. God helped Joseph not to be angry at his brothers. God help Joseph to forgive them. Our memory verse today is taken from Colossians chapter 3 verses 13 and it reads, Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Joseph looked at the 11 men standing uncomfortably before him. The men were strangers to the other people in the palace. Just strangers who had journeyed to Egypt to buy food during the famine. But Joseph knew exactly who the men were. They were his brothers. The brothers he had taught he would never see again. Joseph's mind flooded with memories. He remembered how his ten older brothers had treated him. He remembered the horrible day they had pushed him into the big hole in the ground and then pulled him out and sold him to be a slave in Egypt. It was time to tell his brothers that the man they were standing in front of 
the man who looked like an Egyptian prince and ruled all of Egypt, second only to the king, was really their very own brother, Joseph. Go, Joseph said to his servants, wait outside. Soon only his brothers were left in the room with Joseph. Tears began to stream down Joseph's face. I am Joseph, he exclaimed. I am your brother. Is my father still alive? He cried. The brother's mouth dropped open. Could this very important ruler of Egypt really be their brother? Suddenly they were afraid. What would Joseph do to them? They had been so mean to him. They had sold him to be a slave. Come closer to me, Joseph said. He knew his brothers were frightened. I am your brother Joseph. You sold me to be a slave in Egypt. But don't be worried, he said kindly. God is really the one who sent me here. He sent me here to save your lives during this famine. Go home quickly, he said. Tell my father that I am ruler over all Egypt, second only to the king. Bring him here and your children and your grandchildren. You will live here with me and I will take care of you during the years of hunger. Then Joseph and his brothers talked for a long, long time. Joseph told his brothers over and over that he forgave them for what they had done. And Joseph had lots of questions about the family. Reuben sighed a big sigh. He felt good. He felt forgiven. Reuben looked around at his other brothers. He listened as they interpreted to each other to tell Joseph happy story about their children. Reuben knew his brothers felt forgiven too. They would bring their family and their father to Egypt and Joseph would finally see his father again. Our message today tells us that we can forgive others because God forgives us. Isn't that wonderful boys and girls? That's all for now. Have a happy Sabbath. Bye. Good morning boys and girls and happy Sabbath. Before we go into our lesson for today, we want to do a quick review of the three lessons that we did this month. Now the first lesson, lesson 10, food for one more. What we learned is that God provides for us, that he hears and answers our prayer, and he blesses us so that we can be a blessing to others. Lesson 11, fire on the mountain. We were encouraged to stand up and to stand tall for Jesus. We learn that God is the only true God. And when we pray, God sometimes say yes, he may say wait, and he may say no. Now lesson 12, God's gentle whisper. And we learn that even though we serve God, sometimes we may feel sad, sometimes we may feel discouraged, but God promised that he will always be with us. We also learn that we need to study God's word. So that what we see, what we hear, and what we read, we know that it is truly from God. We learn that God speaks, but we need to we need to listen. Now our lesson for today is up, up, and away. The message: God's grace is the gift of eternal life. Our memory verse together. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6 verse 23. Now we have been studying about Elijah and all the great work that he did for God. And now God was planning something special for Elijah. And what was it? 
Yes, he was planning to take him straight to heaven without dying. Now God knowing what he was going to do, he asked Elijah to anoint Elisha as the person who would take his place. Now we read that in our lesson last week in 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 16. Many of the prophets who worked with Elijah, they knew that God was going to take him away. Now, one day, Elijah, he took Elisha and he took him on a last journey to visit the school of the prophets. Yes, the prophets went to school. And what he did, he encouraged them to stay loyal to God. Now, some of the prophets asked Elisha if he knew what was going to happen. And Elisha said yes. And he was so sad. Comes like if somebody close to us, you know, going away and we know that they're not going to come back. We feel sad. That's how Elijah felt. He felt sad. Now, another thing that Elijah did, Elijah tested Elisha. Now, at every school they went to, Elijah, what he told Elisha, he said, Stay here. I need to go on. But Elisha said, No, no. He said, I'm coming with you. Now, Elisha wanted to be with Elijah until the last moment before he was taken up into heaven. So they walked and they talked. And they came to the river Jordan. And there, Elijah, he took off his coat, he rolled it up, he hit the water, and it parted so that they were able to go through. They continued to talk. But then it was time to say goodbye. And Elijah he asked Elisha, he said, Elisha, what can I do for you before I'm taken away? Now Elisha didn't say, well, I want him, your money. Or he didn't tell Elijah, I want your house. No. He said, let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. And Elijah said to him, he said, if you see me when I am taken away, then your request is granted and then suddenly a chariot and horses of fire appeared and it and separated the two men and Elijah was taken up to heaven in a whirlwind and Elisha he cried out he cried out my father my father the chariots and horsemen of Israel but Elijah was gone and Elisha was so sad tore his clothes but then Elisha saw something he saw Elijah's coat he picked it up he walked to the Jordan River he hit the water and it parted so that he was able to go across now did Elisha get the gift that he asked for yes indeed he got the gift now boys and girls think about it if God were to ask you what gift do you want, now what would you tell him? Think about it. Now this is our lesson for today. And what can we take from our lesson? Now Elisha knew that he had a great work to do for God and he knew it wasn't going to be easy. So he asked for a double portion of God's Holy Spirit. Now we too have a work to do for God and we too, we too know um, we too need God's Holy Spirit so that we can be able to do His work. Good morning. The title of the lesson for this week is Earth's Make Over. Have you ever seen or heard about a house makeover? Usually a group of experts remodel and redecorate a house in a short space of time. The owner doesn't know what is going on or what the house will look like, but when they see it, they usually are very surprised and happy because their houses look better and brand new. One day, God is going to do a makeover for the earth. Yes, after Satan and sin are destroyed, God will create everything on earth new again, just as he did at the beginning of earth's history. 
our power text reminds us of that. It is taken from Revelation chapter 21 and verses 3 to 5. And it reads, And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And as I said, it's taken from Revelation chapter 21 and verses 3 to 5. And our PowerPoint says, We will live with Jesus forever on the new earth. We will live with Jesus forever on the new earth. What a wonderful thought, boys and girls. Now, Ellen White tells us that the earth will have beautiful mountains and hills and everything will be clean, the grass will be a living green, the flowers will not wither, and the weather will be perfect all the time. Can you imagine perfect weather all the time? No hurricanes and storms and earthquakes, no extremely hot sun, no flooding because of too much rain. The weather will be just perfect. We will travel to other worlds, Jesus will teach us about all of his creation and we will learn about the plan of redemption. We will never get tired or bored. The children's faces will beam with holy joy because of their freedom and perfect happiness. She says we won't remember the bad things about this earth, but we will remember the good things God did for us. Everything we learn, we will remember. The Great Controversy, page 678, tells us, And the years of eternity, as they roll, will bring richer and still more glorious revelations of God and of Christ. As knowledge is progressive, so will love, reverence, and happiness increase. The more men learn of God, the greater will be their admiration of his character. Amazing. And it also says in early writings, page 295, and all the redeemed hosts, old and young, great and small, cast their glistening crowns at the feet of their redeemer and worshiped and prostrated themselves in adoration before him and worship him that liveth forever and ever. The beautiful new earth with all its glory was the eternal inheritance of the saints. The kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven was then given to the saints of the Most High who were to possess it forever, even forever and ever. What a wonderful life we will have. So let us repeat the power point. We will live with Jesus forever on the new earth. Boys and girls, I don't know about you, but I want to live with Jesus forever on the new earth. Do you? Happy Sabbath, everyone. Today's mission story comes to us from the country of Mexico and is entitled, Gift of Life. The Sabbath school teacher had a big announcement to make to the children's class in Monte Morelos, Mexico. I know a boy who isn't well, teacher said. Let's go to his house this afternoon to pray with him and give him a gift. Teacher thought a few children might show up at the scheduled time in Los Sabinos Seventh-day Adventist Church. He arrived with a plastic bag filled with canned food and chili peppers to present as a gift on behalf of the class. To his surprise, all 15 children from the class showed up and each had a gift. 
Some had toilet paper and soap, others had beans, rice, sugar and salt. The children rode in two cars to a small house. The house consisted of only one room, two beds. The children found 15-year-old Adrian sitting on one bed. His crutches were resting against a wall. Adrian's father and seven-year-old brother slept on the other bed. The room also had a two-burner stove and a small refrigerator. All 15 children crowded into the room and stood around Adrian's bed. 12-year-old Eli opened his Bible and read Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. Adrian wasn't interested in listening to the Bible. He had multiple sclerosis and although he was only 15, had suffered several heart attacks and he was worried about his health. The words of the psalm caught his attention. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, Eli read. A desire was kindled in Adrian's heart to know more about God. The children sang a song about God and the teacher prayed for Adrian. Thank you, God, that we were able to meet Adrian, he said. Please bless Adrian and his family and his life. Teacher offered to take Adrian to church every summer. That's a great idea, the boy exclaimed. I would really like that. The children piled into the two cars and headed back to church. They rode in silence. Each thought about how they had nice houses and good health. They felt ashamed for complaining to their parents about small things like not having a hairband or a toy car. The next Sabbath, the teacher picked up Adrian and brought him to church. The boy immediately felt at home. People warmly welcomed him and he liked hearing the Bible stories as the weeks passed. He learned more about God and especially liked the story about Jude, who suffered much but never stopped believing in God. He wanted to be like Jude. Adrian attended church for three months. Sometimes the children's Sabbath school came to visit him at home. One day, Adrian's father called to church. I have big news, father said, but it's not my place to tell you what it is. One minute. He passed his cell phone to Adrian. I've been thinking about something, Adrian said. I want to be baptized. What do you think? This is the best news ever, teacher than me, father said, his voice broke. I have never been able to make the decision to be baptized. The children in the Sabbath school class were thrilled to hear that Adrian wanted to give his heart to Jesus. After taking Bible studies, Adrian was baptized as the excited children from Sabbath school watched. The boys made a video of the baptism to give as a gift to Adrian. Adrian was the first and only Adventist in his family. I made the right decision in being baptized because I feel like I'm only really living when I am with God. The children in the Sabbath school class are real missionaries for sharing Jesus with Adrian. And now Adrian is a real missionary praying for his father. This quarter Sabbath school offering will help open a missionary training center at Monte Morel University. Not far from where Adrian lives in Mexico. Thank you for your generous offering. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls, and welcome again to another craft time. This morning we'll be doing drawings, and our drawing will have three flowers: a daisy, a tulip, and a lavender flower. Now, the items we would need are a sheet of white paper and crayons okay so boys and girls we want to start with our tulip first and our tulip will be in the middle of our page so you want to first draw a u then at the top of each end of the u you want to make a curve going out to the left on the left side 
and out to the right on the right side. Then we want from the left tip, we want to make a big curve and come down to the center and meet at the bottom of the U that we just did. Then we want to make another curve, a smaller one though, and just meet it at the center. Right? Touching the first curve, the first big curve that you make. Then we want to do two other curves. So you could probably estimate the center and put a little dot here. And then you make a curve to the left like that and a curve to the right like that and there we have our tulip now we want to draw our daisy so we're gonna put our daisy on the left side we start with drawing a small circle after we draw a circle we're going to be doing loops now I want to start by doing my loop at the top now this loop must be long. Then I want to draw a loop at the bottom. Same length. And I want it to be long. Then we can do one to the left. And then one to the right. Like that. Now it looks somewhat like a windmill, doesn't it? All right. So now we want to do. Now we want to do a loop in the center of those two loops. Now, if you don't know how to draw a loop at the side, like how Auntie did it, we could just turn our paper. right and then we could just draw our loop going up like we did before but if you could do it without being confused then you could just go ahead and continue drawing the loops between all right Now we want to make a little more loops and we want to draw them within the spaces. However, we are not starting at the circle here. We start in from middle of slightly midway between the other lines. So we're continuing by drawing our loops between those lines and if you want you can just if you want and you think you want a little more petals right um, if you see a space and you find it looks a little big you could just do the top of a loop right there between that space Boys and girls, now we want to draw our lavender. Um, to draw our lavender, we're going to take our dark green and we're just going to use a light, we're going to draw a light, a very, very light line. Now, just to be safe, I would recommend you using a pencil at first, right? So we're just drawing a light and I want to do a curve first into a line going downward. So I'm starting here and then I just, just ever so light like that. Now we want to do some wide U's with our dark um, purple crayon. So we have a crayon here. It's purple, but it's very dark. And we'll start here. Thank you. 
and you want to do wide a wide you and then you want to make loops on the inside did you see that let's do it again so you do like a wide you and then you make loops on the inside but as you go up your loop should be getting smaller and you can even do less loops so we started with four loops and now as we get smaller we're going to go to three loops Now we're going to go to two loops. And then we'll just do one loop at the top. All right. So now we want to color our flowers. Let's continue with the lavender. So we're just going to color inside our loops. Now we want to take our green, use the dark one if you want, or the light one, any one you choose. Um, we're going to take our green and we want to just do some leaves for um, a stem, right? And uh, we want to do a leaf. This one leaf should be fine for each flower. This might... Oh, okay. Um, well, boys and girls, if that happens, <laughs> you can just take the piece and continue. Or you could peel off the paper. Or you could use another crayon. Alright. Um, Alright, so guys, if you want, you could do um, some grass just at the bottom. Let's see if we can get um, some grass in. So there we have it boys and girls, our three flowers and these flowers 
Although they are flowers, they are very different in shape, in size, and in color. Do you know that we, as God's children, sometimes have different shape and size and also color? Some of us, our skin tone is darker than others. And some of us, our skin tone is lighter than others. And some of us, we may be a little short. Some may be tall. Some of us may be a little broad, a little wide, have a little weight. And some of us may be a little skinny. But do you know that no matter what our color, shape, or size, Jesus loves us all the same. Hello everyone, my name is Emta Punch and I'm from the UK. My nature now gains a daffodil flower. What the daffodils symbolize, the daffodil flower begins to pop up when winter ends. They are symbol of spring and, and symbolize a new beginning and rebirth. They are a positive life symbol with a bright and joyful yellow color. This, this is what daffodil looks like. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, good day, boys and girls. I'm so happy to be with you today and share with you a very special story that I hope will give you encouragement and it will definitely help you whenever you are going through a moment of worry, doubt, or sadness. Now, a few years ago when I was in fifth grade, I was out to recess. We were all playing, we were on the seesaw, we were on uh, the merry-go-round, uh, we got on the swings, and we were having so much fun, and uh, we were playing with each other, and just having a great time. Uh, now, what happened was that I decided to get on the swings and I was there with a good buddy of mine and we were swinging up and down and we were having so much fun it was exciting <laughs> and what happened is that before you knew it the whistle blew because recess had ended so what happened well it was time to go in however my friend and I kept on swinging and I said, hey, you know, I think we should go in now. Everybody is almost at the door. Uh, I think we should kind of wrap up this this uh, swing and, 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 and jump off and get in line. He said, oh, no, man, it's no big deal. Uh, let's continue to swing. So, well, I, I continued to swing back and forth, back and forth, and it was fun. I was, I was having a great time. But then I realized, you know what? I looked to the side and I saw my teacher waiting at the door. So I said, you know what? Hey buddy, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna jump off. This is my, this is my last, last swing. So I swung up, swung back, and then swung up again and I jumped off. So after I jumped off, I started to make my way over to my classroom. And uh, my friend said, hey, look at me. And he was having, he was, he was going higher and higher. But then I noticed something happened. What do you think happened, boys and girls? Well, something happened to the foundation of the swing. And what happened was that the swing started to uproot. And before you knew it, uh, I looked and I said, oh my goodness, what's going on? He kept on swinging, he kept on swinging harder. And every time he swung harder, the, the swing started to pick up, the foundation started to pick up. So here's what happened, boys and girls. He fell back. The whole swing fell back. 
and it fell right on his chest. And I said, oh my, this doesn't look good. So I ran over to him and he was crying because he was hurt badly. And I said, I said, Kevin, Kevin, are you okay? Are you okay? But he wasn't. He had been hurt really badly. Uh, he had broken ribs, he had broken bones, he had a few fractures, and he was going to need a lot of medical attention. Now, thank God, uh, he was able to, to get medical attention right away, but unfortunately, uh, his, his situation looked really bad. And I thought about it. I said, what if I had remained on the swing? The same thing would have happened to me. And one thing that my parents told me, it stuck with me. It, they said, listen, Paul, Obedience is better than sacrifice. What does that mean? <laughs> if your parents tell you not to do something, or if someone who is in authority tells you not to do something or to do something, you should do it or not do it. You should follow instructions. And my takeaway from that experience was if my teacher someone who means me well, someone who cares about me, someone who loves me, is giving me some instructions to do something. I should do it right away. I should obey. Because if I obey, then chances are everything will go well. Now, what happened after that was that later, because of his injuries, he didn't make it. And I was very sad. I was actually heartbroken. I, I cried. I cried a lot. Because I realized that could have happened to me as well. And here's what Joshua 1 verse 9 says. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. I thank God that he was with me that day. And I want to assure you, boys and girls, that the Lord is with you wherever you go. So from this story, I hope you take away a few life lessons. Number one, God is with you wherever you go. Number two, it's better to obey than to choose your own way. Number three, trust, trust the Lord in whatever situation you're in. Because if you do, and you do the right thing, guess what? You will have the best outcome possible. Now, now if you think of, you know, stories of Bible characters in the Bible, uh, where things haven't gone as well, and they were serving the Lord, uh, they were children of God, it would give the impression that you know what, maybe things don't always work out when you are serving the Lord. In other words, does bad things happen to good people? Yes. Bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people as well. That's just a reality of life. But the fact is, the Lord has said he would be with you wherever you go. So you don't have to worry. You don't have to be dismayed. You don't have to doubt whether God is with you or not. 
Now, I remember another time in my life where I got in a very, very terrible accident. And it was actually moments it had I been hit just seconds earlier, I probably wouldn't be here today. But the Lord protected me through that experience. And he saved me from calamity. He saved me from destruction. And even though I have, I have aches and pains a few years later in my back, but I'm just reminded that could have been my life. And sometimes things may happen in our lives and we wonder, why did it happen to me? But again, Joshua 1 verse 9 reminds us, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. No matter what we go through, friends, we can be strong, we can be bold, we can be courageous. We don't have to worry because the Lord is with us. So boys and girls, no matter where you go, just know that the Lord is with you. Have a blessed and wonderful Sabbath.